Hello guys, this is the final part of the Blender interior design tutorial. As you can see I added all the furniture same way I did with the sofa. You can find all the assets in the scene down in the description with blend format. The assets are separated and it is material fixed. So just select your file and drag it to the scene. Append and put it in a collection. Go to the outside. Let us fix the metal frame. It looks like it is not assigned to the metal material, so just select the material he assigned to, and replace it to our metal material from the material icon. So back to inside, this scene look bit dark, we are going to fix it don't worry, but first, Make a copy of the curtain at the big window. This part is mostly about fixing light and reflection, and how to make simple animation with the camera. So with that said, open the add window and go to light probe and select reflection plane. Back when we made the wood floor material we decreased the reflection value. So now we are going to add a reflection plane because it is much realistic looking. After selecting the reflecting plane, lay it over the wood floor. It should cover most of it, at least the part shown in render. So looking to our scene, we are going to need to reflecting plane. So make one and copy it. You don't need to be much accurate in the dimensions after placing it. Go to the setting, in the viewport section, check show preview plane. And switch to EV mode, keep moving it along the Z axis until the reflection pops up. After that uncheck the show preview box. Copy the plane to the remaining part of the floor. After adding the reflection planes, from add window, go to light probe, and this time choose irradiance volume. It looks like two cubes inside of each other, so scale it to fit the room. Try to make the smaller cube edges align with the walls and ceiling, after placing it. Go to the EV setting, scroll down to the indirect lighting section, so we need to bake the lighting calculation generated from the irradiance volume to our RAM, hit bake indirect lighting and wait until the bake ends, it should not take more than 5 minutes, after that if you, notice lights coming from the ceiling edges you might need to delete the bake, scale down your irradiance volume, and bake it again, so the lighting inside looks better now, we just need to fix the exposure. First go to the cylinder outside, up the strength to 6, now select the sun and increase the power to around 40. In the EV setting, go to Bloom, make the threshold value of 2, put the intensity to 0.05. Scroll down to the color management section, experiment with the exposure and gamma values. The values change from one scene to another, so play with it. After that, from look, select high contrast, you can also experiment with the bloom values so you get a lighting you like.
One final thing to add is the 3D wall, so find the file and drag it to our scene. Choose a pen, and put it in a collection, after that, let us place it on the wall, drag it along the axis to the windows corner, you can press shift plus C to move objects along the other two axes without changing their attitude, so in this case to move the object along the X and Y axis, press G then shift plus C, rotate it by pressing R to have the right side. So, our wall is 250 centimeters and about 300 centimeters high. To edit the 3D wall, press in to open the edit panel. Change the X value to 0.5 if you want meters unit and the Y value to 0.6. To copy it over the wall, we are going to use the Array modifier. From Modifiers, select the Array, increase the count to 5, add another Array modifier, but the offset on the X to 0, make the Y value 1, increase the count to 4, and we are done. Do not forget to apply the modifier. When you are finished, Let us go back to the reflection planes, open probe setting, and change the clipping offset to a value of 1, you should have a nice acceptable reflection amount from the wood floor, so experiment with it. Now, to the camera, choose a shot you like. To make your view the camera view press Ctrl and Alt plus 0, move the camera back to get most of the room in the frame. You can use clipping in the camera to hide something in front of your camera lens, in this case the wall. So up the clip start value just. Enough to hide the wall, go to the transformation setting, try to make the camera straight, keep it on two axes. Now, to make simple animation with our camera, we are going to move it along one axis, so, select the camera, choose your axis, and set a number for your animation frames. I am going to set it on 120 frames, in the transform setting, we need to move the camera along the Y axis, you can see dots near the transformation values, hit the one near the Y axis in the location section to apply a keyframe, you can press I as a shortcut, after that go to the last frame, move the camera to the new position, add another keyframes, and that's it, a smooth and nice camera movement. We also going to add some movement to the ceiling fan. So like before, select the moving part from the fan, that would be the blades. Go to the transformation setting, and apply keyframes in the rotation section along the z-axis, so on to first frame add a keyframe, go to the last frame, change the rotation value, add another keyframe, now it is on.
So to the TV, to make the TV on, we need to add something called images as planes. So in Blender 2.8 you can find it with the import window. Go to File, Import, select Images as Planes, choose the image or video you want. Hit Import, now we need to scale it to fit the screen. Easy way to do that, delete the TV screen, place our plane in one corner. Place the cursor in that corner, move the pivot of the plane to make it scale in one direction, you can do that from Object, Set, Origin, select Origin to 3D Cursor, now press S and scale it to cover our TV, play the animation and watch your movie, make it short. Finally, to the render settings, starting with the EV setting, make the sampling something between 96 and 128, that's up to your laptop, on the scene dimensions, from the file format, you can go and render your animation as a MP4 file, that would be alright in small animations, but when you have like 500 frames or so like the animation you see in the beginning, you might try to render separate frames, then, you need to switch to the video sequencer, go back to your first frame, then add your frames to the sequencer. After that you can go to file format and make it mp4 format, hit render animation. It won't take more than one minute, so that's it, hope you learned something useful from this tutorial, stay sharp guys, goodbye.